Hey guys, welcome to Factoring Polynomials Overview. So this video is going to serve as exactly what it says. It's going to be an overview. So I'm going to assume that you've seen all of these factoring techniques before. Um, the things we're going to go over today, we're going to go over the greatest common factor, factor by grouping, factoring trinomials, and difference of squares. So what's the point? What's the point of factoring? So factoring, what I want you guys to think of is, I want you guys to think of this picture up here as like a messy room, right? Um, the polynomial has kind of been dumped out, everything's all over the place, everything is in terms of sums and differences, and what we want to do with it is we want to pack it all back up, okay, basically make it a clean room. So factoring takes sums and differences and turns it into products. So that's what we're doing when we're factoring, but why do we want to factor? So factoring helps us with a couple of different things. Some of them are for polynomials. It helps us to find our x-intercepts. Um, it helps us to find solutions to polynomials. It helps us find zeros of polynomials. Um, and then when we get to rationals, it's going to help us simplify rationals. So, and then down at the quadratic level, factoring also helps us solve quadratics. Okay, so there's many, many reasons why we need factoring, and it's kind of one of the big um, things that we need to know to do all this. So, that's why we need it, so let's get going. So the first factoring technique we're going to go over is greatest common factor, which is exactly what it sounds like. So you have, in this case, it's two terms, but you have many terms. It doesn't really matter how many terms you have, as long as it's more than one. What you're looking for is you're looking for the greatest common factor. And we're going to look at the greatest common factor of the numbers or the coefficients, as well as what's the greatest common factor of the variables. So in this first example, we see, well, this is coefficient 1, and that's coefficient 3. So the greatest common factor is 1, so not anything too interesting there. But what about the x's? Well, I have x squared here, and I have x to the first here. So the greatest amount of x's that I can take out of these is going to only be 1. Because they all, they both at most have 1x in common, right? I can't take out 2 because there's only 1 here. So I took out 1. If I take 1x out of x squared, what I'm left with, well, I'm left with just one of the x's. And if I take 1x, out of negative 3x, basically I took that guy out, what am I left with? I'm left with negative 3 or minus 3. So this guy factor is going to be x times x minus 3. In our next example, so we have two coefficients this time, so we have to look, is there a greatest common factor? And we have a negative and a positive. So since our signs don't match, we're going to take the positive versions out here because it's not like I have a negative and a negative and I can take a negative factor out. So let's look at our number. So we have 40 and we have 28. So what's the greatest number that goes into 40 that also goes into 28? If we think about factors of 28, we got 1 and 28, we have 4 and 7, we have 2 and 14. If we think about factors of 40, we have 1 and 40, we have 2 and 20, we have 5 and 8, we have 4 and 10. Um, so it sounds like the greatest thing that both of these have in common is going to be a 4. So if I take a 4 out of negative 40, in other words, I divide it. If I divide negative 40 by 4, I would get negative 10. And if I divide 28 by 4, I would get 7. Now we check these two guys to make sure there still isn't another common factor, because if there is, we still have work to do. So, but 10 and 7 share no common factors. They're relatively prime, so we're okay. And then x cubed, we didn't factor anything out because this term has x's, but this term does not. So therefore, there's nothing in common here as far as the variable goes, so we can't actually take anything out. Okay? So negative 40 plus 28x cubed would factor into 4, parentheses negative 10 plus 7x cubed. Let's go on to our next strategy, which is factoring trinomials. So the two different examples I have here are the two different types of trinomials you're going to see. The first one here is your leading coefficient is a 1. In other words, there's not a number in front of the x squared. 
and the other type is the leading coefficient is greater than one. In other words, there's a two or something bigger in front of this. There's two not really different uh, strategies in that the strategy you could use for this 5x squared guy could also be used for this x squared example. Um, however, there's a shortcut, is what I'm going to call it, when your leading coefficient is 1 and it makes things really quick. So when your leading coefficient is 1, the quick way to do it is we're looking for two numbers that multiply to 18. So what two numbers multiply to the 18 and add, so they need to add to this number, they need to multiply to this number. So the same two numbers, if added together, will give us negative 11. So two numbers that multiply to positive 18 that add to negative 11, my hint here is they're both going to be negative. So the numbers that we're looking for here is going to be negative 2 and negative 9 because multiplied together they give us positive 18. But added together they'd give us negative 11. Okay, so that's the most amount of work you have to do because then once you figure that out it's simply x minus 2, x minus 9. That's it. See the negative 2 came from here and the negative 9 came from here. So the two numbers that you figure out that multiply to the back number that add to the middle number, you just throw them in your parentheses with your x's and you're done. So that's what's really nice with leading coefficient of 1. It gets a little more complicated when our leading coefficient is greater than 1. So what we're going to do here is we're going to do box method. And you don't have to use box method. There's like four or five different ways to do this. I only use box method because it's an algorithm and you can just follow the steps and you'll always get it right. There's not a whole lot of critical thinking involved. So it's pretty easy. So the first thing we need to figure out, similar to the last example, so we need to find two numbers that multiply to the product of the first coefficient and the last number. So in this case we want two numbers that multiply to 5 times 12 which is 60 and those same two numbers need to add still to the middle number which is 19. 19. So two numbers that multiply to 60 that add to 19, what could those be? Um, let's see, 60 is 12 and 5. Um, what else is 60? 60 is 6 and 10. 60 is 3 and 20. All right, so what are the two numbers that we're looking for? So two numbers that multiply to 60 to add to 19. We're going to use 15 and 4. So what do we do with those numbers in this box here? So the way that this box works is you take your first term and put it in the top left. You take your last term and put it in the lower right. And now we're going to use this 15 and 4 and we're going to fill in these other boxes and it doesn't matter where they go. So 15 with the variable, 4 with the variable. And now what we're going to do is we're going to use our greatest common factor. We're going to pull the greatest common factor out of the boxes vertically. And we're going to pull the greatest common factor out of the boxes horizontally. So greatest common factor of our vertical boxes on the left, 5x squared and 15x, well 15 and 5 greatest common factor there is 5, x squared and x greatest common factor there is x. Now these two boxes, 4x and 12, greatest common factor of 4 and 12 is 4. This guy has an x, this doesn't have an x, so we will not be taking any x's out. Alright, horizontal boxes, 5x squared and 4x, well 5 and 4 are relatively prime, no factors there x squared and x, we can take 1x out of there. 15x and 12, the greatest common factor of 15 and 12, that's going to be 3. And that guy has an x, that one doesn't, so we can't take any x's out. So our final answer then would be 5x plus 4, and we're using plus because 4 is positive, and x plus 3. And we're done. So that's box method. 
Um, like I said, there's plenty of other methods to use for factoring trinomials. I just like this one because it's an algorithm. It's a step-by-step. -step, it's a recipe. Um, so it's the easiest thing to do once you can remember the steps, and that's kind of the trick in it. So our next strategy is factor by grouping. And factor by grouping, if you can recall, is exactly what it sounds like. We're going to group terms two by two, and then we're going to factor each group. So if we look at this, let's see, let's use that yellow. If we look at this first, for example, we have these two terms and these two terms. Now the parentheses I'm putting in don't mean now this thing times this thing. I'm just literally using these as grouping symbols. So now, after you group, you take the greatest common factor out of these groups. So the greatest common factor here, 2 and 5, no, oh, x cubed and x squared. I can take an x squared out. If I take an x squared out, 2 stays 2. x cubed, I'm taking out an x squared, so there's 1x left. 5 divided by 1 is still 5. x squared. I'm taking out x squared out of x squared, so these guys kind of cancel each other out. They go to 1, technically. So this is what we have here. All right, now what's the greatest common factor in this set of parentheses? Well, let's do our numbers first. We have negative 28 and we have negative 70. The greatest common factor there is going to be negative 7. If I take a negative 7 out of negative 28, we'll have positive 4. X gets to come along because we didn't take any X's out. Negative 70 divided by negative 7 will be positive 10. Okay, and now we look. Oh, we still have a 4X and a 10. We're not done, right, because 4 and 10 still share a common factor. So this is, in fact, not the greatest common factor. We need to use something bigger. And the something bigger that we're going to use is going to be negative 14. So now this takes us into positive 2x, and this takes us to positive 5. And the, the trick with factor by grouping is you want these two parentheses to match, because now what we're going to do is we're going to combine x squared and negative 14. So x squared minus 14. Basically what we're doing is we're factoring out this term, right? If we look at if we look at this term, this is all one term, and we look at this term, this is also all one term because they're only separated by one subtraction sign. What's the greatest common factor of this term and this term? Well, it's the whole thing of 2x plus 5. So if we take out 2x plus 5, Right, if we take 2x plus 5 out of this term, we're left with negative 14, and that's why that's right there. If we take 2x plus 5 out of this term, we're left with x squared, and that's why that goes there. So this guy is done. So let's do that again with this example over here. So again, I'm going to group the first two terms, and I'm going to group the last two terms, and we're going to play greatest common factor. So x cubed and x squared, the greatest thing I could take out of there is x squared. If I take an x squared out of x cubed, I'm left with 1x. If I take an x squared out of 4x squared, I'm just left with the positive 4. All right, second group, negative 25 and negative 100. The greatest common factor there is negative 25. If I take a negative 25 out of negative 25x, I'll just be left with the x. And if I take a negative 25 out of negative 100, I'll be left with positive Four, because negative divided by negative is a positive. So the same thing, let's look at these two terms. And out of these two terms, this x plus 4 is the greatest common factor, so we're going to take that out. So x plus 4 comes out. Now if I take an x plus 4 out of here, what do I have? I have x squared. And if I take a x plus 4 out of here, what do I have left? I have a minus 25. So we are seemingly done However, we're going to go through this example in the next set of slides, but this guy is actually going to factor further to x plus 5, x minus 5, because it's a difference of squares. 
x plus 4. So this is actually the full factored form here. So how did we get from x squared minus 25 to x plus 5 to x minus 5? Well, this is a perfect segue because now we're going to look at difference of squares. So a difference of squares is exactly what it sounds like. So when you see two terms, and the first term is what we call a square term, and the second term is also a square term or a squared number, and they're separated by a difference or a subtraction sign, notice this is only difference of squares. Sum of squares does not exist. It's not factorable. It's prime. You can't factor sum of squares. Only difference of squares. So if you see two terms, and the first term is a square term or a square number, you see a minus sign, and then you see the second term, which is also a square term or a square number, you should start using difference of squares. So the formula for difference of squares, if you have a square term, and you subtract another square term, it factors into the square root of the first term plus the square root of the second term times the square root of the first term minus the square root of the second term. So how is that going to work here? So x squared is a squared term because it's x squared. 9 is a squared number. It's 3 times 3. So the square root of the first term is x. The square root of the second term is 3. And then we just separate it with a plus minus and we're done. So let's try this over here. This one's a little more complicated. So this is also a difference of squares. It's two terms. The first term is a square term. So 36 is a square number. x to the fourth is a square term. In fact, any even power is a square term. So I'll say that again. Any even power is a square term. So let's take the square root of this whole first term. So the square root of 36 is 6. The square root of x to the fourth, all you do is cut it in half. So 6x squared was the square root of the first term. What's the square root of y squared? All you do is cut the exponent in half, so it's y to the 1. Separate it with a plus minor, minus. The order doesn't matter. And we're done. So that's the last example for you guys. Um, if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to ask. Again, this video was meant to serve as an overview. If you need to go deeper into any of these topics because you forgot more than you thought, um, don't hesitate to go into um, some videos so you can dive deeper into each one of these tactics. Okay.